Walker for your colorful presentation. Our next speaker is Brett Axel on um, working with independent publishers. Brett is a little bit of a hero, stepping in at the last minute when one of our presenters one of our presenters had to cancel at the last minute, um, which we really appreciate him being able to come in today. Brett is a poet, playwright, novelist, and children's author whose six books have sold over sixty thousand copies in total. He moved to Buffalo in twenty nineteen to take his current position as editor in chief of Vinyl Publishing, Inc., owned by Jean Vinyl. Hey, Brett, could you come on up? Thank you so much. Thank you. I uh, appreciate that, and I do appreciate um, being last so that I don't have to sit and listen to other people after I'm done. <laughs> I, 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 I love listening to people, but when I'm finished talking, then, uh, then I'm, I'm wiped out. Uh, I, I usually talk to people about um, getting published and what you can do to increase your chances of getting published. And I talk about writing and how you can improve your writing. Today, I am focusing just on working with independent publishers and pros and cons and watch outs, particularly one watch out, since I only have 20 minutes, something that um, uh, Dr. Nervigal mentioned when she was up here was a Libris, and I am going to talk about that quite a bit, okay? Because that is not a publisher. That is a scam company that makes money uh, off of aspiring authors, not off of book sales. And Libris is owned by a company called Author House, and they own 15 different scam companies. Uh, First Books is one of them, iUniverse is another. And what they'll do is scam as much money as they possibly can out of you. And then they will approach you under a different name and trash the company that ripped you off before that they also own and scam you again. So no, we're not a Libris. We don't do anything bad like that. Come sign up for us. And they will take as much money as you have and deliver as close to nothing as they possibly can. This is not self-publishing, this is assisted self-publishing, and it is a scam, okay? My number one watch out, when you want to, if you are an independent author, that doesn't mean that you have to pay to be published. As a rule, do not pay a penny to be published. Hybrid publishers, this is a new phrase that is coming around, they will tell you, you pay some of the expenses, we'll pay some of the expenses. Guess what? You're going to pay all the expenses and their profit. Okay? What they are doing is they are selling you a magic hat. You've seen a magic show, you've seen a rabbit pulled out of a hat by a magician, and they're telling you that you can have unlimited rabbits if you just buy their hat. It's not going to work. It's a trick. Okay? Sometimes a self-published author can do very well, but not by going through one of these scam companies. If you want to self-publish, you need to know all of the things that you don't know. You need to be prepared to spend $30,000 on marketing and use legitimate marketing companies, not this scam avenue. You need to tour and you need to do a lot of in-person events at bookstores and at libraries and you've got to pedal your books. You need to hire professional editors 
and not the ones that advertise in the back of writer's digest because they're really, if they had all those skills, they would be editing their own books and making their own money. <laughs> so, don't buy a magic hat, okay? Get your work good enough to be accepted by a publisher. Now, I work for an independent publisher. I love independent publishers. I had an opportunity, oh, 22 years ago, to be published by one of the big six publishers. I sat in their office uh, to discuss the terms, uh, and I had one thing that I really insisted on for my books. And what that was, was I wanted my books printed in a facility that is safe and healthy and hires adults who work, not children. I didn't want my books printed in third world countries in sweatshops with child labor. And I could not get the publisher to agree to that in contract, in writing, okay? And that will be true of any of the major publishers that might be interested in your book. Uh, Roger, um, no, uh, uh, Michael Moore, the activist against social, you know, bad things like sweatshops, has his books printed by Harper Collins in sweatshops. I don't want to do that. And so I only will work with an independent publisher that prints in the United States or Canada where I am allowed to explore the, the printing facility, walk through it myself and see that it's, it's safe and healthy conditions. So um, I'm, I'm fond of, of independent publishers. And I've worked for them in one capacity or another for 27 years. Uh, when, uh, when Gene Weinel decided to start a publishing company and they wanted um, my novel published, that was the very first thing I said. I said, I will only do this if it is in the contract that, um, you know, that people who make my books are not being exploited. And she had no problem with that at all. Uh, I came back and forth between Albany and, uh, and Buffalo to, to talk to her uh, about my book. And we ended up talking about books in general. And um, you know, she, I guess she was impressed by what I had to say because she offered me a job uh, as the editor-in-chief at uh, the publishing company. And we are doing pretty good, I think. We are putting out some really good products. I brought a couple of them with me to show you guys after the event. Come up and talk to me, and I'll show you the books you can. You can't buy them here, uh, but you can go to uh, Fitz Books, Burden Books, West New York Books, Talking Leaves. Yeah, the children's books are in Alice Ever After. And of course, they're in every Barnes and Noble, no matter where you go. Uh, this is one of them by an author named Sparrow, uh, who writes for The Sun and occasionally The New Yorker. And he was the first author I reached out to, asking to, you know, do you have a book for me? Because I love this work. This is our best-selling book. It's called Dragon's Stuff Dance That Light. It's a children's book. Uh, written by a Michigan author, and it just came in from a call from su submissions. We uh, get thousands of them in, and I read them all. Uh, Jean Vinyl Leona really wants me to reach out to local authors, and even if you don't have something ready yet, uh, we want to be there when you do, and give you tips and, and advice, and try to nurture um, the writing process. I have met a lot of very bad writers in my life and seen them get better over time. And seen people just keep working at it and working at it and 
and fine tuning their work uh, until they're really extraordinary. So if I like meet somebody and go, oh, that, that book's not very good, I know that maybe sometime in the future you will have something that is exceptional. Uh, and you want to see it. Uh, I personally am the one who reads them. So, uh, I made myself some notes, but I'm not following them at all. <laughs> Don't pay to be published, no matter, no matter what. You can invest in your work by, by um, going to lectures and workshops and taking classes and buying books. And I can't uh, understate this. If you have a publisher that you're interested in, buy the books that they put out, or get them out of the library and read them. And when you're talking to the editor or the publisher or the people that are interested, you know, I really like this book that you put out. I'm aware of the work that you do, and I see that I think my work can fit in. What you're saying is you appreciate that. Now, when you're paying a scam company to publish your book, they're invested in you liking them. They're going to tell you, uh, you're great, you're perfect, you're wonderful. But um, when you're when you're working with uh, an actual publisher, they want to take something that is great and make it better. We want to work with every little line. Every, is that comma definitely you know, needing to be there? Can this be different? You know, is there anything that we can do to tweak it to make it better and make it better? A real publisher is going to be working with you uh, from the time you sign until the time that book comes out to make sure it is an excellent, just you know, the best book that it can be. The company that I work for is a for-profit company. The object is to put out books that will sell. And I definitely see wonderful, wonderful books come along that I say, you know, the 150 people who will appreciate this are going to love it but it doesn't have market potential. There are other avenues for a book like this. Maybe you should submit it to a nonprofit arts organization. Sometimes it's a collection of recipes from your dead grandmother, and the only people who are going to buy this are your family. You can self-publish that. Generally, I do not like uh, Amazon, uh, self-publishing program, or um, Ingram's version, Ingram's Spark. I think they make it too easy to throw something out on the market. And what you see when you read these books over and over again is, oh, that could have been so good if it had been edited longer, if it had been worked on. But because now you're taking the elevator instead of taking each step, toward getting published, you skipped the making it so good that it had to be published. So many really wonderful authors miss their chance to write something lasting, write something amazing, because they rushed it to the press long before it was ready. Now, I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, taking your time of spending years working on a single book, like Victor Hugo did, making each one count. You know, if you finish a novel in a year, that should be a first draft, not a final draft. And when you do get a publisher who's, who's interested, uh, don't let your ego get in the way. Uh, when working with an independent publisher, Signing that deal does not mean that you were perfect, that your book is the best book that was ever written. It just means it was good enough that that publisher is willing to work with you to make it great. 
Another thing, and people talk about this a lot, how do I make a living as an author? Well, the first thing I, I tell people is lower your standard of living a lot. <laughs> you can make a living as an author if you are going to a different bookstore, cafe, or library in a different city every day and you're living in your van and you don't have rent to pay. And you're going, you know, to the cheapest possible resources for food and shelter. If you're home raising a family and like paying for a mortgage, um, it's really hard until you become very, very well known. But one of the things that my boss, Jean, Vinyl wanted to do was make sure that authors who are creating great work are getting paid, are making money. And what Vinyl Publishing does and what legitimate independent publishers do is they pay you for your work. Not enough to live on, but something that says you did something of value. Yeah. And you know, once you're in, you know, I think I covered the don't let your ego get in the way, and I'm going to be more general about don't be an unpleasant person. <laughs> I work with amazing authors that are, are kind and gentle and cooperative, and occasionally I work with somebody who's really nasty and unpleasant. And it doesn't matter how good a writer you are, if you're a miserable wretch to be around, nobody wants to work with you. And if you go to a book signing and only four people show up and nobody buys your book, you know, it might be because you are a really unpleasant person. <laughs> I showed up to do a book event about 15 years ago at a Barnes & Noble in Gross Point. Uh, you, Michigan, and they forgot that I was going to be there. <laughs> so they, they had no sign, they had no uh, uh, um, outreach, they didn't have it in the newspaper. There were a couple of people who knew me that came, so my audience at the beginning was two people. But I was happy to be there, and I was smiling, and I was talking about my book, and you know what? There were people in the bookstore. And by the, you know, I may have started with two people in the audience, but by the time I was finished, I had 12. And even though it was a really, really small crowd, I sold enough books to pay for my trip to Michigan and that. You don't want to get a reputation for being an awful person, for being an unpleasant person. You know, it takes very, very little to be nice. We recently had to make a decision between two different books that are due to be published. And we went with the person who's going to go out there and be nice to the audience and sell lots of books, rather than the grump who's never happy with anything. <laughs> well, this one author is going to be waiting longer to get his book out because he calls me yelling at me. I don't like this cover-up that I liked a month ago. Now I want something different. It's like, well, it took a long time to get to this thing that my boss likes, the, 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 the buyers like, he like, and now you don't like it. So well, now I have a different artist. So we, you know, we ended up commissioning another artist that that author chose to do a cover and that paid him for it but we're not going to use that cover because it's not very good and you know to, to, to be dealing with an author who's unpleasant you know it's not going to get better when the book comes out there it's like oh I, I hate this one thing uh, you know and I I'm an editor. My job is to, to go through that book and to make sure everything's perfect. And sometimes a change is very, very small 
like, ooh, the name of this one character is similar to a name of a character on a TV show. Let's change it to, to be more distinct. Uh, and what I don't want to hear is, I don't want to change anything. This book is perfect. Uh, and I can, you know, I can listen to an argument, you justify why something shouldn't be changed, but don't just do it because of your ego. Uh, one of the people that was up here talking um, mentioned getting a bad Amazon review, since we're on the subject of um, things to, to look out for. Um, I have one bad Amazon review uh, for my novel, and it was posted by my former best friend. <laughs> uh, someone that I worked with for, for years. We went to college together as, as struggling authors. We, got, uh, we, uh, we did book events together, and she was just like, I think, so resentful that I got a book deal that she didn't get, that she kind of just trashed me. It hasn't hurt the sales. Uh, but that is something, you know, when you're talking about things to watch out for, when you do get a book deal, when you do have a real book that is in bookstores all over the country, you're going to find out who your writer friends actually are. Because some of them are going to be, I'm so happy for you, and others are going to be, you got what I should have got. I don't know, uh, you know what you can do about that. Uh, uh, <coughs> cry it out and you'll get over it. <laughs> uh, when you are looking for a publisher, there are certain questions to ask. And some that you don't have to ask them. You just look it up yourself. Okay, A real publisher that's going to help you sell your books needs to be distributed. You need to be able to go into any Barnes and Noble and find that book when it first comes out. And if that book is not in bookstores, it's not going to sell. Now people will love to tell you, oh well, you know, 30% of all of the, the books sold are sold online. They may be purchased online, but they're still sold in person. Someone looked at that book, touched it, picked it up, flipped through it, and then decided to buy it online. They saw a friend's copy. They saw it in the library. They saw it in the bookstore but didn't have money that day. Even though online sales are increasing, you need to have your book physically out there to be sold. A lot of people talk today about doing this for the love of writing, and I think that most of us love writing, but we love eating too. <laughs> there is no reason that someone who has spent their entire life working on the craft of writing should not be able to live off of their work. You know, you are a writer, you've written something of value. Uh, it should be distributed, it should be out there, and you should have every chance to, uh, to get it sold. I uh, got some very good advice from the publisher that put out my first book. Uh, Steve Cannon is dead now, he, he's the director of the nonprofit arts organization and gathering of the tribes. And he said, the hardest thing in the world to get is a second book deal. With a first book, nobody knows what's going to happen. It's, you know, you're an unknown property, you could become the next big superstar. But once you've had a book out and it fails, like 5,000 out of 5,001 books do, then you have a known reputation as a failure. <laughs> and it is hard as hell to get a publisher to take a chance on another book when your last book didn't do well. <laughs> and uh, he told me this 
she encouraged me to go out and do a lot of signings and a lot of like radio appearances and things to get the, 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 the book sold. But I took it a different way and decided to work on getting a second book deal before the first book came out. So I signed my second book deal uh, roughly a year later, before my first book came out. And thank God, too, because my first book didn't settle at all, my second one did. Uh, so since my talking time is up, I'm going to uh, allow people to ask questions. But please, just ask the question. Don't give me five minutes of life stories so that people can, you know, can ask more questions, OK? And if you run out of question and answer time, please come up to me and talk to me. Give me your card uh, and take my card. I would be absolutely happy to continue this conversation after or in person later from the evening. Um, I, I would also like to know if you can help publish um, work that are already on the market in other language. Because part of my audience of the work I'm doing uh, is about people who speak French, so I don't know if uh, you help in that regard. That, well, that's not something that I'm an expert on. Um, but I could probably, you know, if you give me, drop me an email, I might be able to find someone who is an expert on it. Well, uh, I can't help the whole world of writers, but at least in the Buffalo community where I'm right here, I'll do what I can to, uh, to try to put you up who can best help me. I'd like to uh, thank you for pointing out the importance of an editor. Uh, an old acquaintance of mine here in Buffalo, the late Murray Light, uh, publisher of the Buffalo News, once told me, it's okay if you go out with an editor as long as you don't marry him. <laughs> but you know, my book was self-published here in Buffalo last year. It's a local history book. It went through endless and endless rewrites. And I've received over-the-top reviews by everyone who's looked it over. It's about Buffalo's first environmentalist uh, back in the uh, back in the 20th century. But I thank my editor, you know, for all the suggestions, and I, I couldn't have survived without her. So thank you for pointing out the importance of having a good editor and accepting that criticism. You know, absolutely, and that is one of the things those scam companies will not do. They will not edit, they will not notice a typo or nothing. Uh, not everything an editor says is the right thing, but, you know, you better have a team of editors uh, uh, look that over and catch anything that could be embarrassing later. Hi. Um would your company ever be interested in a book that was already published, um, like KDP? Um, you know, that, that is a great question, and I'm not going to just speak about vinyl publishing. In general, the only way to get an already published up book picked up is if you become famous. <laughs> If you have another book that comes out and it does so well that there's interest now in your older work, suddenly those things have another chance. It's one of the reasons you should not go on to Kindle or Spark and self-publish your book because you've missed the biggest marketing opportunity. Uh, reviewers want to know that this is a new book. And the only alternative is this was a lost or forgotten book by a famous author. Uh, that's the answer to your question. Uh, show me what you have now, even if it's a work in progress. Uh, and I am very happy to like, see the first three chapters and concept 
and work with an author for a year or two if that's what it takes to get a, a great book out. Uh, I can't do it every time, but I certainly can do it, you know, if there's an exceptional book. You know, don't show me your already published book. Um, show me what you're going to do next. So I know you mentioned that um, children's literature is one of the, um, the focuses for final publishing. I'm just curious as to what other genres and types of literature you're looking for. Oh, well, we want, um, when we, we, we sent out submission requests uh, for adult fiction, creative nonfiction, uh, middle grade, YA, graphic novel, and children's picture books. We've got exceptional submissions on picture books and some really good novels. But do you know how many good middle grade books we've gotten submitted? Zero. Not even good enough to work with to become good. That is an area where if you're an aspiring writer and you're looking to get published, that is your open door. Because all the people that used to be writing great middle grade books got so excited about Harry Potter and Hunger Games that they're all writing YA now. They think, oh, that's going to be the cash cap. And the people who used to write the middle grade books, they they're not writing. So write me something for an 11-year-old to read. Uh, and, and you do increase your chances of you know, getting accepted. It's not going to be accepted if it's low quality. But if it's excellent, you've got a lot less competition. Uh, hi, I have two questions. Uh, first, who handles the distribution for buying publishing? And are you looking for illustrators? We are definitely looking for illustrators, especially if they're local, since the back and forth is sometimes uh, very time consuming. There's a lot more you can do in a meeting, in person, than you can do um, online. Um, our, we have a fulfillment company uh, that supplies to Ingram, which is the distributor that is selling most of our books, uh, Baker and Taylor is doing most of the distribution to libraries. I, I would say probably 70% of the libraries are, are buying from, from uh, Baker and Keller. Probably 90% of the bookstores buy from Ingram. Uh, so essentially, there isn't a major distributor that you can't find our books. Uh, and that is a really good question, because if your books are not distributed, you can't sell them. You can't even get a signing in a bookstore uh, if the bookstore can't get the book. I think we're going to just go one real quick one because we are, it's, it's one o'clock. Okay, so I will ask, please just ask the question. Okay. I've heard that middle grade books now are only published in black and white. Is that true? Um, I don't know if that's only, but probably most of the time, yes. Uh, you know, I'm a, I, I love little black and white line drawings myself. So, you know, uh, some of my favorite you know, books from my childhood were like uh, Charlotte's Web and uh, you know, uh, The Wizard of Oz were just little little simple but very descriptive uh, uh, black and white ink drawings. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. Okay, so yes, please do come up to me afterward, take my card, talk to me in person. And um, if the library doesn't have vinyl books here, I certainly know if you're going to get them. <laughs> Thank you.
Stephen King to Adrian Guadalupe. Thank you. 